Today I'm chatting all about my recent sewing makes, so if you'd like to see what I've been making, then keep watching. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Susie from Thread Quarters. Thanks for joining me again today. As promised last week, today I am sharing what I have been sewing recently, because I feel like I haven't shown you any recent makes, and I have been doing a little bit of sewing. Not a pile of sewing but a little bit and I wanted to share it with you guys um, so let's just dive straight in so uh, let's start straight off with um, what I'm wearing so this I am sure you guys can all recognize it if you don't where have you been this is the so house 7 toaster sweater I think it's version 2 I don't know why she named them both toaster they're totally different jumpers they should have had different names it's so confusing anyway version 2 with the big neck and the raglan sleeves and the huge cuffs and slightly cropped with a big waistband. So this fabric is the same fabric just reversed so that's pretty cool and because it had such a fun um, right side wrong side um, I decided I wanted to play with that with this make. Um, it took me a little bit of time deciding which way I wanted to do it um, but happy enough with what I ended up going with. Um, here's sort of a close up you can see it's um, got a little bit of a spot it's quilted um, I don't know, sweatshirting, because it's quite thick, not sweatshirting, I don't know, ponty maybe? Sweatshirting? I don't know what you call it. But it's got a little glittered X on this side, and so then on the reverse, the glitter is um, those stripes there. So it's very cute. I like it, and it's very soft and snuggly. And I love the toaster it has those massive big sleeves. I bought this fabric in Paris actually and I'm really annoyed because I had always planned on sewing in my little Eiffel Tower um, ribbon as a label for everything that I was going to sew up with my Paris fabric that I forgot when I was sewing this one up. So I'm going to have to go back and um, try and sew it in just so that you know what I'm talking about I've done it with a different make that's coming up in a second but just to show you there so uh, I picked up that ribbon from the um, sort of like an embroidery uh, shop in Paris called Sajou and it's it's very famous and I had to go and I wanted to buy something everything was very expensive so I just bought this ribbon which was like eight euros for like a meter or something ridiculous like that but I thought that would be a nice way of um, reminding myself of my trip with um, whatever I sew up uh, so yeah I mean there's not an awful lot I can talk about with this pattern in the past I have made a size large and then severely brought it in uh, under the arms and then down the side um, for a much more fitted look and I thought why am I always making a large and then bringing it in let's make the size smaller so this is a medium without any alterations so it's actually a more relaxed fit than my other um, my other ones let's see if I can I'll zoom out for you so um, this is it here you can see I just decided for this one I wanted something a bit more um, comfortable to wear my other ones are up you know they really are sort of tight fitting like that which is nice and flattering I think a bit more flattering than this but this is just for comfort and coziness and I needed um, tops with that comfort um, I needed a few of those in my wardrobe so happy very happy with this it's just a nice um, cozy make and on to my second make um, again this is fabric that I've had in my stash for a while uh, that I bought in um, Paris on my trip last February and it is just a lightweight um, cotton jersey in this uh, leopard print uh, design uh, you can get it in the shops in the UK I've seen it in a few different places and I had always admired it but not bought it so when I saw it in in Paris it wasn't any cheaper maybe ever so slightly cheaper um, but I just thought well it, it's one that I've wanted so I'm just gonna go ahead and get it now um, and this is the um, J 
Jennifer Lauren Handmade Gable Top. It is my go-to t-shirt pattern. I have made it quite a few times. If you've been following me for any length of time, you would know that. Um, and I make slight alterations to the fit of it, which when I stand up, I will show you. But you can also see, you saw little glimpses there. I put these black cloth, <clears throat> excuse me. I put these um, back, blah. I put these black cuffs on it. The um, gable pattern has a pattern for a long, long, long cuff at the bottom of the um, sleeve if you so want them. And I have never made that version. And I don't know, when I was starting to make this up, I thought it's a bit boring just being a plain um, leopard print t-shirt. I don't know why I thought that, but that's what I was thinking. Uh, let's make it a bit different. And I had this black jersey in my stash um, and I thought, oh, let's put black cuffs on it. And the jury's still out whether I like the black cuffs or not. Maybe I'll, they'll start to annoy me a little bit and um, I will take them off and have three quarter length sleeves. But I could, I think one of my thoughts was that I wanted a long sleeve top to be wearing more in the winter because all my gables are a three quarter or a shorter length sleeves and I just didn't have enough fabric for a long sleeve top so I thought well this is a way around that yeah um so let's see so as you can see um it is a looser fit if you know the gable top it is actually a fitted t-shirt like this um, and also it has a straight hem, but my standard um, change is to uh, just straighten out this, the, uh, the sides there and put the curve. You can see at the side it goes up. So I have the curve at the back and at the front and just that little point there, which I think is quite a flattering look. And then you can see my sleeves or the cuffs on there as well. And as you probably know, the gable is like a boat neck. I, I really like the design of this. I did pull down this neckline more than my other ones. And I think that was a good call because the others do choke a little bit. And this one actually sits at quite a nice, quite a nice place. And as you will have seen earlier, I have my little Eiffel Tower label and you do need to put a label in the gable because a label in the gable <laughs> because the front and the back are nearly identical but slightly different um, and you need to know which is the front and which is the back and for my third make there seems to be a, a very monochrome uh, color palette to my makes recently um, and this is another toaster top but the other version, so So How 7 Toaster Sweater version one, I think this is. If I've got them the wrong way around, the right, the right links will be in the description box below. Um, and this is a completely different style. They're, it's not raglan sleeves, it's more sort of set in sleeves. Um, it has a sort of boat neck, slightly raised funnel neck between the two collar and it also is straight down with no cuff at the bottom no cuffs on the sleeves totally different sweater why is it both called a toaster i don't know and this was made out of some ponty that i'd had in my stash for ages i'd had this um project planned to make for a long time so i was really glad to get it ticked off my list if you saw my video last uh, week where I talked all about my plans for the next three months, um, I'm all about getting the stash zone, um, getting, I'm laughing, sorry, because I can hear that the school near me is on lunchtime break at the moment and the kids are screaming. So if you hear that in the background, I'm sorry, sorry, bad timing. Um, yeah, so I'm all about sewing up the stash and um, not buying new fabrics as much as possible so i was really glad to get this made i am on the fence about what i think about this pattern right so this is it in all its glory i don't think i like this neckline i don't like these lines here that you can see uh it does not sit nicely you can see that like that i 
and and it's something that on all the all the versions I've seen online I have seen this but for some reason I thought oh, when I make it maybe it'll be different <laughs> no it, it's the same so it's just the way it's drafted um I mean I did a nice job there that's good let's see about this one yeah pretty good on that side too but um it does doesn't sit nicely and I I mean I know you can get sweaters like this ready to wear that have this nice neckline and I think it's so flattering or just yeah just a nice sort of look but it I mean I've never seen it sitting funny like that before so um yeah and I just don't think it's very flattering I think see the sleeves sort of sit a bit funny as well I do like this can you see the split hem there yeah and it's slightly it's stepped so it's shorter at the front and longer at the back and it's got this very nice mitered corner which might not look so nice I don't know let's see there we go it is properly sewn that's not just folded it's not going to focus are you focusing yeah it's um and I should have overlocked the edge but I really I couldn't be bothered and it won't fray so um yeah that is properly sewn a proper mitered corner it's not just folded over so that is very nice and you get this beautiful point corner very nice and the instructions for that are very good and easy to follow so I do give it a tick for that but for everything else not so much I don't love it I don't really know whether I'll wear it or not it's maybe a little bit big for me as well like I can see that should be more up there so maybe that would help my opinion of it a bit but or is it maybe it's supposed to be dropped a bit I don't know what do you guys think I don't think it's great I think it's okay here let me see it with my face <laughs> I don't know and the final make uh, that I made for myself uh, recently is this uh, red sweater dress um, that I actually wore on Christmas Day I didn't make it with the intention of it being sort of my Christmas Day dress but once I made it I just thought yeah that'll be so fun to wear cozy but looks a little bit a little bit smart you'll see in a second this is not a dress pattern it is the Deborah Zebra funnel neck top by Style Arc and um, I'm all about the necks uh, for all these makes aren't I um, you can see it has this sort of funnel neck thing and it's just grown on it's not like a, a turtleneck or polo neck that you sew on in the round which does mean that you get these creasings and I know I was complaining about it just now in the toaster sweater but they're different with this one they're not as pronounced um, I suppose the neckline is a lot narrower so that's probably one of the reasons why and I don't mind them at all like this it, I actually think it's quite nice and I have made this top quite a few times actually for my trip to Paris last year I made a whole pile of them um, and so there's a video down below I'll put a link down below if you want to see all those makes so um, I knew that I liked the fit of it it's um, set in sleeves uh, long sleeve no cuff just turned up here um, and slightly fitted um, top but I decided to turn it into a dress so I just lengthened it um, and let me also show you just a close-up of this um, fabric because it is really lovely it's sort of like cable knit um, but it's faux cable knit because it's a ponty so it's actually really soft and snuggly and I just absolutely love 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 the color um, I do think I'm looking a little bit washed out on the screen because there's so many bright colors against my winter face but um, it does I do think it really suits me um, so yeah I'll I'll try and move the camera away a bit to show you it but it is actually very long um, so I will put in some photos as well right <laughs> Yeah, so you're not you're not getting the length of it at all. Um, I decided when I had first bought this fabric, I always knew I wanted to make it into a sweater dress. I thought it would be really nice. I wasn't sure which pattern I was going to make. It probably wasn't going to be this one with the funnel neck. 
and I was probably just going to make it to above the knee. But then when I was um, thinking about it, when I was getting ready to sew it, I thought, let's just make it something a little bit different, something that is maybe out of my comfort zone. So I, as, I made, made it nearly as long as I possibly could. Um, and let's see. I'm wearing it with the most ridiculous shoes at the moment. You can see it goes all the way down. It's quite slinky, but still with a bit of room. So you could eat your Christmas dinner and feel very comfy in it. Um, but just a little bit more elegant, I think, and a bit more unusual. So I'll put up some pictures here of uh, me wearing it on Christmas Day that I put on Instagram. Um, and you get a much better idea of the length of it. I really like it. It is outside of my comfort zone in that it feels a little bit slinky and um, I've sort of been avoiding that sort of outfit the last few years but um, yeah I, I do I like it and I do think it suits me uh, I got the, the thumbs up from my mum who is very particular <laughs> so that was bonus and the way I did it was I just sort of held the fabric up to me and thought yes that length is quite nice <laughs> and um, measured down from how did I do it and then I held up the top pattern to myself and dropped a waist uh, dropped a tape measure down to the length I wanted it to be and saw that length and added that much straight down I didn't do <clears throat> I didn't taper it in or out or anything like that just straight down from the um, sides of the top pattern um, and cut that out and it pretty much was the length of fabric that I had I had a meter and a half of this fabric or two meters meter and a half I think because it's not the cheapest fabric and um, I bought this from first for fabrics you can get it in a few different places but first for fabrics um, have a huge range of colors and they also um, include a spool of matching thread with every order which is always a lovely bonus so um, I will link them down below if you've not heard of them before and finally the most recent sewing I did at the end of the year were some Christmas presents very last minute Christmas presents does anybody else leave their Christmas sewing to the very last second and then they're sewing like crazy on the weekend before Christmas no just me <laughs> um, I uh, had loads of loads of plans I never get them all done that was a whole other video last week wasn't it um, and this year I decided I wanted to make some matching pajamas for my son and my husband so um, I did that with some fabric that used to be sheets of ours uh, years ago years and years and years ago and we stopped using them a good while ago but I always liked the fabric and I always thought I would make lovely pajama bottoms so I held on to them for that exact reason and I have only got my sons here and they're all wrinkled I haven't um, ironed them for you I am sorry and they are absolutely basic pajama bottoms um, and obviously I made this for my husband as well hopefully I have a um, photo of them matching together so here it is and I use this pattern here is simplicity 1605 so you can see it's got men's and kids and um, my son is four and a half and he actually doesn't his measurements don't match with the size small for boys he's even smaller than that so do bear that in mind if this is something you're considering for your son or daughter um but I just cut out the small and then I actually I didn't cut out the, the small I traced the small because I thought I want to keep the other sizes available for when he gets bigger I traced the small and then I just pinched it in in a couple of places in the length and also the width and I kept holding it up to him and asking him you know to stand still for me he didn't have a clue what I was doing so I wasn't spoiling the surprise um, and I got them at just the right size actually I don't know how long this will fit him but I have a lot of fabric left over from those sheets they were king size duvet so a duvet so um, there's a lot of fabric there I, I have enough that I could make a matching set for me 
Would that be too crazy? I don't think so. And the whole family? Yeah? Yeah, I think I'll have to do that. Plus more for my son as he grows. <laughs> Anyway, so the only alterations I did with the pattern is that it calls for half inch wide elastic for the waistband. I do not like that. I do not think that a half inch wide elastic for your waistband is nice. No, that is not nice. So I changed it to inch and a half. I changed it to an inch and a half. I had loads of it in my stash and I held it up. And, and I also did not extend the, the height waistband area of the fabric because it's just folded over. It's not a separate waistband. I actually didn't extend it for either my son or my husband and the, the fit is still grand. So there's obviously a, a quite, a quite high waisted um, if you're only putting an inch. And I just, that's, so I, I think that is better. You can see my, back stitching there's a bit messy but there you go um so one second you may have seen in the photo that someone else got a matching um, pair of pajamas this is my son's teddy bear and he got some pajama bottoms too <laughs> yeah I, I can't help it I love cute things <laughs> I love things like that so those were the only pajamas that I made that were matching. I also decided to make a pair of pajamas for my dad. I find him very hard to buy things for. There's nothing he needs. He is, by the time you're saying this, 80. Um, and he doesn't need anything or want anything. So it is very hard to buy for him. So I thought I will make him some pajamas because that's nice. That's something quite nice. So um, I, again, did not know what fabric to use and I was leaving it to the last minute and I left it so last minute that I had no time to order fabric online for it to arrive in the post in time for me to wash it and sew it up. So I had to go stash diving and I searched and I searched and I searched. I don't have a lot of fabric in my stash that would be suitable for an 80 year old man's pajamas. But I came across some lovely um, sea salt um, fabric, just lovely cotton lawn that I had had for a while. I bought it in one of their sales and I never really knew what I was going to make with it. So I just thought, I'm eh, going to make it into trousers for my dad or pajamas for my dad. I did, I did run it past my husband first and ask, what do you think? Do you think are these, is this suitable fabric for a man's pajamas? And he thought that they were nice. So I went with it, my husband, my, my dad has done sailing in the past, so the sailing boats were suitable and blue's his favorite color. So, you know, I knew it was a relatively safe bet. And I just went with the same pattern and same size as my husband because they're, they're sort of the same height and mm, roughly the same size. So I thought it would be fine. For reference, if you are going to make this yourself, I did a size small for the men. Um, my husband's measurements do fall into the medium, but I find a lot of these patterns are quite oversized and I, I wanted a sort of slimmer fit. I thought it's, it's a bit more of a modern look. So I went, I, I chanced it and went for the small. And um, I did get a pair of pajamas off my husband's that are ready to wear a pair that he likes. And I sort of held them up against the pattern pieces to check and they were closer to the salt small size. So I thought that'll be fine. Went with that. They're, a really really perfect fit for him so just bear that in mind. So when I was um, laying out the pattern pieces for my dad's uh, pajamas there were quite large, I wasn't, because of the width of the fabric I wasn't able to put the two leg pieces side by side on the folded fabric um, and it is a directional print so I couldn't flip them or anything like that so they did, they did have to be staggered like this so I had a big space here and a big space here of fabric being wasted which was breaking my heart and but they weren't that big that I could make something like for myself or something like that out of it so I was like what am I going to do with it oh just so happened that the size was exactly the right size to get a matching pair for my son <laughs> so not intentionally I made two sets of matching <laughs> pajamas for um, my son and family members so I mean, they were so thrilled. Here's a photo here of them just um, modeling their pajamas. Um, 
uh, yeah, so I mean, it was just an added bonus actually that um, my uh, son got pajamas to match his granddad. I, he loved it. He was over the moon, and so was my dad. Actually, he just thought it was very cute that uh, he was matching with his his grandson. So there you go, guys. There's what I've been sewing recently. Quite a long-winded, chatty one, but I know you guys like that now and again. If you have enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe if you enjoy my channel. I always do lots of uh, chatty catch-up videos like this of what I've been making, what my sewing plans are, but then of course I do also do sewing tutorials and a huge mixture of different things relating to dressmaking. So if dressmaking is interesting to you, then please do consider hitting the uh, notification bell so you can get notified whenever uh, a new video goes up. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Bye guys!